Hi, I'm Diana, the artist behind My McDoodles. Welcome to my channel. Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to create this really fun St. Patrick's Day themed piece of artwork. We'll make our own stamps to use in our art. I'll teach you how to make a gradient like the rainbow one you see here to make it look like it's like your inky stamps. I started off with a square document. It'll be easier that way to create your stamp. Um, so I'm making a 3000 by 3000 pixel square. That's generally the size I use for the stuff I post on Instagram or whenever I make a square piece of artwork. It works out to like 10 by 10 inches, so it's actually really large. For this tutorial, I've shared this color palette called Lucky. So it's over in my Doodle Squad library. I'll put the information in the description of this video, but you can go to dianamcdermott.com freebies and sign up for the free Doodle Squad. And then this palette will be included in the library. The brush I'll be using for this tutorial today is this monoline brush. It's free with the Procreate app. It's in the calligraphy section of the brush library, and that's the brush we'll use to create our stamp. First, we need to create a stamp of like the shamrock or the four leaf clover. Um, so I'm going to use my monoline brush and make a guide. So I'll just hold my pen and then place a finger on the screen. It makes it perfectly vertical. And then I'll do the same thing to make a horizontal line. And that will be my guide to draw my shamrock. So I'll just turn it down a little bit here so it's kind of just faint but still um, visible. Make a new layer on the top. I'm still using my monoline brush. I also like to streamline it so you can go into the brush studio and turn streamline all the way up and it'll make a nice smooth line for you. So I'll draw my shamrock in here using my guide. And it's okay if it's not perfectly symmetrical. If you would like it to be um, perfect then you can use the tools that are provided by Procreate in the um, drawing guide. So you can just push drawing guide, click it on, and then whenever you go in here, you can choose symmetry. And um, there's all kinds of options here. You can do quadrant, radial, and then when you draw, it'll just perfectly repeat. But I kind of like mine a little bit wonky and stuff, so I'm not going to use this assisted drawing um, feature. Okay, so once you have your shape, you can just drop your color in. If for some reason it doesn't completely fill the space, you can slide left um, or right to adjust the threshold. But the monoline brush works pretty well for uh, dropping the color. And then I just wanna rotate it a little bit so I can draw my stem. So I'm, I'm gonna make sure magnetics and snapping is turned off so I can just rotate it freely and put it about right there. And then I'll just draw in my little stem and turn off the plus sign drawing guide in the back that I created. And this will serve as the base for our brush. So I'm just gonna size this up and get it centered on the screen and as large as possible so that I can use it for my brush. So that will be my shape. That's like the stamp that I'm going to like carve. Um, so to to copy this, you can go to this menu here, the actions menu, click the wrench, and then um, add, and then copy canvas. And now it's copied onto your clipboard. You go into your brushes, press the plus sign, and now you're creating a new brush. So I would like to um, paste that shape. So I'm gonna go over here to shape, edit, import and then paste and right now if i kept it like this it's going to stamp a a black square with a white shamrock so i want to reverse that so you just take two fingers and tap on the sh the shape um, or the image there and it'll invert it so this is what i'd like to use because this will stamp anything that's white will be stamped in like the color that you choose so that is my shape you could leave it just like that and have it um, like perfectly solid, or you can add some grain and stuff. Um, as you can see, if you start trying to use this, you just made like kind of like a blurry brush. So you need to go up here to the stroke path and then take the spacing um, all the way up 
so that it spreads it out. And then if you would like it to be solid, go to um, Apple Pencil, and then where it says pressure, you just take the opacity all the way down. And so the pressure does not affect how transparent or opaque your um, paint will go on the page. You could save it just like that and be completely finished. To test it out, I just make a new layer and then you can see it's going to stamp these cute little shamrocks really easily. If you'll notice, they're all perfectly um, straight up and down, like they're all going exactly the same direction. Now you can um, mess around with that a little bit and turn your paper and then it'll stamp like depends how your paper's oriented. So then you can get like a little bit of variation simply by doing that. But I like to um, adjust mine in the settings. So I'll go back into the brush and then on this um, stroke path here, you can adjust the jitter so that it kind of like, when you're drawing with it, it won't always go in a straight line. And you can also go in here and do like scatter, rotation, and that kind of thing, and like mess around with the settings. So every time you stamp it, it will come out slightly different. It won't always be the same. And I kind of like that about stamps. So I don't know, it depends if you like the predictability of it or not. If you want it to be like stamped exactly where you put the pencil, like perfectly straight, then just leave it alone. But if you kind of like how it's like scatters and stuff, then you might want to adjust some of these settings. Um, so I'll go in here and just mess around with some of those things to make it scatter out the way I want. And then also the green. I like it to look like it's kind of like an inky stamp rather than a perfectly solid um, color just laid on the page there. So I'll go into the green and press edit for the green source. And then if you push import, you can choose some greens that are included in the Procreate library or you could like upload your own. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the source library and then look for one that's kind of like really like textury and gritty, um, something that would look like a stamp that's been um, pressed on the page that's like inky and stuff. So something like this might be good, this charcoal rough. And you can also invert these if you need to just by taking two fingers and tapping on the screen. And you can mess around with like the scale and these settings here to, to, um, to get it exactly the way you like. So play around with those and see how you like it. I'm gonna try something like that. And the last thing is I like to create a point, um, like a saved reset point for all of my brushes. So if I change settings in it and I'm like, oh shoot, I don't like that, I wanna go back, you can always just press reset. So I always create a reset point. And then of course, like I'll put my name in here when I have um, brushes that I create for others. And you can name it here too. So I'll just call it Shamrock Stamp. Okay, when you're happy with it, just press done. And now it's easy to find this brush and to know exactly what it is. It's named and everything. Um, although you can see it's a shamrock, but it's still nice to have a name. And now we'll test it out in our paper. And you can see how it stamps like slightly different each time as far as like being rotated a, a slight bit. And it's pretty fun. And you could also just sweep it across the screen and just get like scattered stamps, which is pretty fun too. I thought it could also be fun to have um, a stamp with words. So you could do that either by writing your word out or just adding text. So I'm just gonna write the word lucky and you can choose whatever font you want. You just type it out and then go in here to edit the fonts. I happen to have one that is my own handwriting, um, which I'll show you at a later time how to create a font from your own writing. 
and I'm going to use that. So you can adjust it a little bit as far as like the size and like the spacing and everything. Um, and when you're happy with it, just press done. Actually, you need to make it as big as possible, so might as well do it in here. Okay, just get that like centered up on my page. And then I'll do the same process where you just, you have all your other layers turned off. Press copy canvas, go into the brush settings and add it just like we did before. So there's my lucky brush. And if you need it to be bigger, like this, this is at the max size and it's pretty small. You can always go in and adjust things. You can go into um, the uh, properties here and then you could adjust this max size and just make it quite large so that you can get it to be different um, sizes and have lots of variety and everything. Um, and then just save it. And now you can see the maximum size is, is much larger compared to what it was before. So now we're ready for the fun part. I'm going to just color all over this page with the rainbow colors in the monoline brush and just make it really big. And then just grab these bright colors and just, it doesn't really matter how you do it. It can be so messy. Um, it's really forgiving. So you just kind of like sweep these across the page and make like a rainbowy background here. Okay, so that'll be my background. And then I would like to also just maybe add some like random lines here. Um, I know that looks weird right now, but we're going to blur it. So I'll take this whole background and then go up here to um, the adjustments menu, which is the magic wand. And you could use the Gaussian blur or I'm gonna try the motion blur and press layer. And then just kind of like blur this out to your liking. I think that looks kind of like paint strokes and it looks kind of pretty. So I'm gonna go with that instead of the Gaussian blur and use that as a clipping mask. These are my stamps. So let's just get those out of the way and turn them off. Um, so I'm gonna create a new layer behind the rainbow layer and press clipping mask for the rainbow. And then in the blank layer, Grab the shamrock brush and then kind of size it up. Mine's not going to be that huge, it's maxed out, but it doesn't stamp that large. And then just kind of like sweep that across the page and you get these cute little shamrock stamps, like really inky and it looks like so fun and like happy, like you stamped it with all these rainbow colors. And then I'll go in and add some of those lucky stamps too. Um, you could do it in this rainbow layer as well, but I kind of want to do it on the top and make it like uh, glittery gold. So grab my lucky stamp and I'm going to choose this goldish, the darkest yellow to kind of make it look gold. And then I'll probably put some glitter over top of it too. And then just kind of like stamp those all over the place. And then on top of the Lucky, I'll put um, like some gold glitter. There's a sheet of gold glitter paper that's also available in the Doodle Squad library. So I'm going to use that and clip it down on top of these to make it look really fun. So this is the gold paper that I'm going to use for my design. And you can see there's all kinds of stuff in this library here that I add to weekly. So I got my gold glitter there. I'm going to press clipping mask to clip it down to my um, lucky stamp. And you can resize it too. If it looks like it's a little too chunky for this particular design, you could just resize it down and place it as you need to, to cover the stamps. In my rainbow, I want it to be just like a little bit more intense. So I'm just gonna duplicate it here and just press color burn 
and just make it like a little bit brighter here and like show up a lot more because my green on my stamp um, it kind of made it a little bit less uh, intense than I and saturated than I thought so I like it like this so this would make like a really cute scrapbook paper or um, just like a background for an image or whatever you want wallpaper that kind of thing so this is just a really short fun tutorial but I hope you enjoyed it if you make this fun little project, I'd love to see what you created. So if you post it on Instagram, be sure to tag me at my McDoodle so I can see it and share it in my stories. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, click like and don't forget to subscribe before you go so you don't miss out on the next fun project. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.